Hi, I'm Damian Andrew, and welcome to this DAF Media Special. The last few months have been very challenging for towns across the country, including Darien. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced residents to shelter in place and businesses to shut down. But this beautiful town in southwestern Connecticut is slowly coming back to life. There are more and more people out and about in Darien's retail districts. Along Post Road and in Good Wives Shopping Center, there is activity. And that's a welcome sight for business people and town leaders. Yeah, it, it's so critically important. And I would I'd probably use the word relieved um, to see our local businesses with doors open. You know, across the street, we have 1020 posts. They can now have some people sit inside, which is great because you can't predict the weather. And, you know, rain shouldn't stop you as a business person from making a living. So I couldn't be happier. One of my favorite shops, Blue Mercury, with the door open today. I know I need a few things in there. So that's really, really exciting to me. Um, more foot traffic is great. Summer's a wonderful time. To have the sun out today, and you know, here we are at Grove Street Plaza with people enjoying coffee and, and seeing each other and just being out and about, and cars, <laughs> actually cars on the road, Yesterday, I saw a little bit of a traffic jam on the post road and I thought, isn't that nice to see that there's actually a little bit more traffic out. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, it's invigorating, it's hopeful, and it just shows that uh, Darien is a wonderful community and it's great to be here. Just as school calendars are completed, phase two of the state's reopening is underway. Join me now as I catch up with a few business owners in town and get their thoughts on Darianne's return. I'm outside of Jake's place with the owner, Jeff Schoenfeld. And Jeff, uh, things are starting to reopen in Darianne. I know you guys have been open for curbside pickup for a long time now, but uh, how does it feel? Is there a little bit of an excitement in the air? More people uh, on the road, more foot traffic in downtown Darianne? Yeah, I would say that uh, there's a positive vibe going on and uh, we're seeing people come back slowly but surely. I've been to Jake's place uh, many times, I'm not going to lie. If someone wants to come in here and, and get something off the menu, what's the, give me one or two really good choices. Well, we're very popular with our breakfast sandwiches, bacon, egg and cheeses, and uh, the burgers, cheese steaks, and chicken cutlets and things are popular sellers. Yeah, they're all good. I can uh, guarantee you that. Uh, talk about uh, breakfast sandwiches. You're doing a, a promotion with the graduating uh, seniors at Darien High School. They can come to your place and get a free bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Correct. There was a tough year for everybody, but especially the graduating classes. And uh, we'd like to offer that as a token of our appreciation to the community. So all you seniors, come on down to Jake's place and grab a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. We're standing outside the Darien Toy Box with longtime owner Bill Jensen. And Bill, so glad to see you. Uh, you guys have actually been offering curbside pickup since the beginning of this pandemic. What have been some of your top sellers? Hi, thanks. I think that probably since the very beginning or for March, it's been puzzles followed by Lego. And Lego not for kids, but Lego for adults. Uh, Lego's like a puzzle. I mean, we, we, we like doing the big complicated models. So that's been pretty good. As a parent though, you just don't want to step on the loose pieces on the floor. <laughs> We're in phase two now of the state's reopening. It's got to make you feel good as a store owner here in Darien to see the increased uh, traffic, the increased foot traffic around town. I love it. I mean, look at the number of cars here. All of a sudden, it's like there's people out there. There's people at the restaurants. My neighbors are now opening. I, I, I've been promoting my neighbors. Like the nail salon is now open. Bubbles is open. The restaurants are open. Hey go to a coffee shop, help the local guys. That's really, I think it's what been really cool. We're here with uh, Rosie Costello, the owner of Everything is Rosie. Rosie, let me ask you this. You have uh, a wonderful little boutique. Uh, 
it's got to be really kind of exciting for you to see the increased traffic, the increased foot traffic around town as a Darien business owner. That's correct. It's very exciting. We re got to reopen on May 20th, and so many of our customers came back to support us to make sure we could stay in business. And we also couldn't have stayed in business if David Genovese from Corbin hasn't, hadn't helped us because he, he was helping all of his tenants try to get through these bad times. Yeah, no, absolutely. What kind of precautions have you had to take? To, when we opened the store? Yeah. Well, everybody has to wear a mask, and if someone walks in and doesn't have a mask on, the town was nice enough. Jamie Stevenson, who is our first select woman, she came in and supplied us with a big box of masks, and someone else in town supplied us up from town hall with a big thermometer if we wanted to check our employees or anything like that. And um, so we, we have masks for people. People come in to buy masks, but we give them a mask in the meantime if they don't have one because some people forget one. Joining me now is David Nelson, the owner of 1020 Post here in Darien. And David, you can now start serving people in your outdoor dining uh, patio area. That's got to feel good and a lot more foot traffic now in Darien. Yes, with the indoor opening today, which is we've been looking forward to this forever, we're really excited to have people come in here, just walk in off the street and come in and eat. We've been serving outdoors for the last month or so doing reservations only and accommodating some people that come in. But this is really great. This is like us getting back to a regular restaurant. David, I love to eat. When I come to 1020 Post, what's one or two dishes that I really want to try? We're, we're an oyster bar, so we have oysters every day. Today we have five different kinds of oysters, four East Coast, one West Coast. Tons of people come for oysters here. We also do an incredible amount of seafood in general. But the hands down best thing on the menu at times is the burger. We are standing outside of Sipsters here in Darien with owner David Wagner. And David, you guys have been open since the beginning of the pandemic, deemed an essential business. Uh, what kind of precautions have you had to take over the last several months? Sure, the face masks, for sure. Um, we've also put up a whole barrier inside and locked in so people couldn't necessarily walk in initially. Um, now we're sort of limiting the capacity inside. Uh, but we've been, you know, taking as you know washing our hands and sanitizing everything as often as we can so I know you've been pretty busy uh, during the course of this you've been open throughout uh, the pandemic it's got to make you happy though to see Darianne come alive a little bit more foot traffic here uh, along Post Road uh, that's got to make a business owner like yourself feel good oh totally especially as the vice chair of the Darian Chamber of Commerce and now seeing people out and cars out and nice weather, hopefully people can come out and shop local again because uh, there's definitely some shops that need it for sure. I'm here with Rob Van Curen, the owner of Flower Water Salts. We're outside his shop in Darien. And Rob, it must be nice to see more and more foot traffic in Darien uh, as the weather has gotten nicer. Yes, the weather's nicer, shops are reopening, so we've seen a ton of walk-up business and uh, just bigger groups coming, they sit in the courtyard. It's awesome to see people's faces. What have people been craving? Uh, craving, uh, pizza has been uh, huge for people. Um, really kind of nostalgic foods from people, you know, kids, uh, from, from people's childhood. So coffee cake, pizza, uh, sourdough, and uh, just plain croissants. We are outside another restaurant, Bistro Baldanza. I'm with the owner, Angela Baldanza. And Angela, this is the first week that you can al start allowing customers to dine inside, not just outside. Talk a little bit about that and how that's going. Well, it's going well, no, tonight. Tonight's the first night, and we've got a lot of reservations. We're very excited about it. And we've been transitioning very nicely here. Each day we get more and more customers coming back, including people coming from over the bridge in New Jersey and, and Rockland County that they, you know, aren't open there yet. So they're coming into Connecticut, which is wonderful. So when I come here to eat and I do like to eat, what do I want to order? Well, you definitely want to start with our beet salad. That's one of our signatures. Uh, the next one is the Papadelli Bolognese because it's a house-made Papadelli. It's amazing. It's delicious. We use grass-fed beef, beef and all fresh meats in the Bolognese sauce. And then you want to end up with our fabulous cheesecake, all made here. Awesome. Sounds good. Angela Baldanza, Bistro Baldanza.
Well, we're outside of Brown and Company with manager Margot Crody. And Margot, it's been a difficult few months for business owners across the country, including those here in Darien. But you guys have actually found unique ways to keep your business going here at Brown and Company. We have. Um, we, we found that this was a, a great time for us to get into new uh, ways of doing business. We started with uh, an Instagram campaign right away since we were right before Easter. We started with an Instagram campaign where we were doing Easter baskets for people. And our hashtag Easter baskets actually caught on large. I, I learned so many new things about the way you use things like Instagram. Um, our hashtag Easter baskets uh, made it so that we were able to ship to California, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. Um, people all over the country were getting in touch with us for Easter items for their kids because they just didn't know where to go and what to do. Seeing people out and about and having people come into the store and being here actually when people are just coming out um, is comforting. We have a lot of regular customers and they are happy to see our smiling faces behind our masks and um, they're just happy to be back and doing their normal routine. We're here outside the Bodega Taco Bar with manager uh, J.P. Freyer. And J.P., obviously a lot more foot traffic in downtown Darien, and that's got to be a, a welcome sight to you guys. Uh, we love to see more and more people every day. Uh, we're here to make everybody happy, good time, good food, um, and just a good atmosphere. Many restaurants here in Darien have been busy during the pandemic feeding those in need. It's called Corbin Cares, and it's the brainchild of a former Darien resident now living in California. I had the idea of, you know, we've got an incredibly generous community in Manhattan Beach. Can we garner the support of the community to provide a fund that would then be used for our local restaurants to then provide meals for the hospitals that were in, in need? And so we launched it in Manhattan Beach, and it was incredibly successful and a wonderful way to save our local businesses and provide meals for those who really needed the meals at the time uh, that COVID was really about to hit. I connected with David, and uh, David took the concept and made magic happen here in Darien with Corbin Carris. I'm really worried in the beginning of the pandemic around you know our retailers and our restaurant operators, how they'd get through this. So we took that idea, we packaged it, and we presented it to the public through social media. And immediately, um, we started to raise funds privately, but immediately the Darien Foundation called us and said, you know, this is an awesome idea. It's a great um, public-private partnership where basically, you know, we're creating an opportunity for people in the town to support the businesses they love and to support the frontline hospital workers. And then Jamie Stevenson called us and said that the kitchen for the Darien Senior Center, the Mather Center, was going to be closed and seniors needed help. And so uh, we broadened it to include Darien seniors for whom we provide a lunch and a, almost a lunch and a dinner every day, five days a week. And then we added food rescue, uh, which used to be called community plates. And they're basically um, working with us to deliver 30 to 50 meals per day to homeless shelters like the Open Door Shelter in Norwalk, uh, in Spirica and others uh, that are in need of, of meals. There's a lot of people who were food insecure when the pandemic hit, and that number's only grown um, you know, over time. Um, but it really was an incredible collaborative effort, and we're really grateful for the support. We feel like we did some good uh, through the Corbin Cares effort. What an absolutely great initiative. Before we go, I'd like to recognize a special group of people who have helped build DAF Media over the last three years. Our class of 2020 student volunteers, Colin Adams, Chris Benedict, Sam Cragen, Carson Depp, Katie Duggan, Peter Fox, Ethan Haas, George Holt, Jackson Leone, Aiden Maniscalco, Ben Olson, Graydon Overbeck, Taryn Pardo, John Reynolds, Jack Roberson, Charlie Sears, Owen Sheed, Luke Sini, Ryan Smith, and Mark Trafone. Thank you for all of your hours and efforts volunteering to make DAF Media the success it is today. Your impact will always be felt. Have a wonderful summer and all the best in the future. Well, that does it for this DAF Media special on Darianne's reopening. Thanks for watching. I'm Damian Andrew.